Hello, my name's Carl. I'm an effects supervisor at CineSight London. In this presentation, I'm going to be talking about our effects workflow at CineSight, from how we output content for review in dailies, how we QC our data, and ultimately how we get renders to comp. CineSight is a global studio outputting visual effects for film and TV, and also feature animation. We have sites in London, Montreal, and Vancouver, and we're also partnered with Trickster and Image Engine. Recent projects include No Time to Die, Black Widow, Space Jam, Tribes of Europa, and The Witcher. CineSight recently ventured into new territory with a 130 foot wide, 60 FPS, 9K backdrop for a 20 minute stunt show experience at Universal Studios. The Born Stuntacular opened last year in 2020 uh, and VFX suit Salvador Salvador and his team won a VES award for outstanding visual effects in a special venue project. CineSight London has 200 employees, which means we're big enough to have a dedicated pipeline, which we share across the group with a very strong support team, but we're not so big that we're locked into a rigid workflow all the time. And we're flexible enough to adapt from project to project, depending on its needs. Our shot workflow is built on a shot bundle system. Shot bundles are per shot packages, which contain all of the required assets for that shot. That's things like cameras, geometry, rigs, plates, and renders. Each department can contribute a layer to the bundle. That can be data that overrides existing slots from upstream, like animation animating a character that layout I've already added, or it can be new slots like effects adding dust and debris elements. The effects team create content exclusively in Houdini. We also use it for some creature work and for environments. We've recently been using Houdini as well to efficiently process assets and procedurally modify them, which would normally take a long time to do by hand. Gaffer is our primary lighting application. It started life at Image Engine and it's open source, and we continue to develop it at CineSight. You can find out more about Gaffer at gaffahq.org. Effects can publish boxes into Gaffer, which can attach to any asset slot inside the bundle. A box can be anything, but we typically either output effects looks or effects rigs, which can post-process the data in some way, such as adding instances, doing point decimation, or applying additional transforms. I'll be using Fate the Wink Saga to demonstrate our workflows. Winks was a Netflix episodic show released at the beginning of the year, and it had lots of elemental magic and very unique effect shots, which meant a really varied output. And here's a short reel for some of the work that we did.
As with most effects tasks, we typically present first with a flipbook. Flipbooks give a sense of motion, timing, shapes, and scale. Flipbooks are also quick to iterate, which means we can get new versions back into dailies really quickly. All of our ROPs are assetized, which means renders are versioned, and you can automatically or manually publish directly to F-Track for review. As with the default OpenGL ROP, you can choose your objects to render, you can add backplates and apply basic textures. We also have a wrapper layer on the ROP, which allows for multiple inset thumbnails for reference. And you can also add holdout objects, which is a simple trick of projecting the backplate onto that geometry. If you're rendering from the camera with a backplate, you can enable a post-process as well, which applies lens distortion and any 2D repo data that's been published. So the final render will match the current editorial. For render layers that are purely emissive and don't require any lighting, we render directly out of Houdini. It's things like magic, fire and embers, sparks and electricity. Our primary render is Arnold, but in some cases we can use Mantra as well. That's usually when we need things like point cloud lookups, CVEX procedurals, or some more familiar noise patterns. Assets are lit and rendered in Gaffer, but on Winx, the burned one character had a lot of fire around it, so we had a version of the look converted to H2A. This allowed lighting to concentrate on the main lighting of the asset, but effects could render any interactive light passes as and when the fire was updated. And in some cases, we might get a light rig sent back to us from lighting, and this allows us to iterate on lit effects renders for comp without the bottleneck of switching between departments. Renders are chained into the out network and slotted into the shop bundle. This then triggers an optional automatic slap comp when submitted to the farm. Automated slap comps are a re very recent addition to our pipeline. You can either choose a generic template script or you can make an effect specific template that would compile renders in a certain way. Placeholder nodes extract renders from the shop bundle using various filters. And we can also use placeholders for plates, cameras, and lineups. The whole script is expanded live on the farm, which ensures everything is up to date at the time that it's made. Automatic slap comps mean consistency across shots when outputting similar effects. Um, it massively reduces the artist's time when putting the slap comps together. And as a bonus, after a night of rendering, when you come in in the morning, you've got a slap comp ready to view. Once the slap comp is reviewed and the renders are considered good for comp, the shot bundle is whipped and then comp can access that package of renders. When outputting content for lighting, we review the effects via a QC render. This is a gaffer render created using a shot bundle render template. In this template, your new bundle is loaded alongside the other whipped bundles from upstream departments, which means it's always up to date. Each department has a box which customizes the output depending on the current task. And the script is branched per show. And throughout the show, we continue to add various tweaks, which can all be enabled depending on the current shot context. You might want to color code an asset in any shot that it appears. In one sequence, you might want to use a particular light rig. And in one specific shot, you might want to just hide a particular character. In effects, we default to occlusion renders, but you can also enable gray shade or full looks. Bundle renders are fast, and they serve as both a review for the effects alongside other assets, and allow us to QC various aspects like motion blur, um, contact shadows, uh, we can make sure the UVs are exported correctly, and we can also validate our gaffer boxes like effects looks and effects rigs, such as instances. Once the QC is reviewed and set to whip, Lighting can pick up the same bundle into their lighting scene, and they'll inherit all of the same data. So to summarize, we have a few methods to review QC and render our content. We'll start with a flipbook render for initial feedback, if outputting emissive content, we can render directly from Houdini and present via a slap comp template. If approved, those renders can then go straight to comp. In some cases, a Houdini render might be an intermediary stage and the data is still packaged for lighting as a QC. QC renders validate our data in a gaffer environment, so we know lighting can work with it straight away. 
and we're currently adding the ability to use custom gaffer templates that would allow us to output comp ready renders with full looks and publish light rigs with a full AOV set, all via a Houdini submission. That wraps up my presentation. I hope you found this interesting and maybe took away some ideas for your workflows. Thank you for watching.